go to Japan because our man in Japan is Owen Shane. Owen, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, lad. What's the crack? Where are you? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm in Oita, about to go to Wales against Fiji. You'll probably see uh, a lot of uh, Welsh fans here behind me. There was uh, a couple of Welsh fans actually just came up saying that uh, they do watch us on YouTube. So be careful, sir, whenever you're slagging off the Welsh fans uh, in the future. You do have an audience of people who may be affected by uh, your snide lines about uh, Wales. Well, we're up against Fiji here in Oita tonight. Sorry, go ahead. Well, we'd all prefer if England were to win than Wales. I mean, we know that as a we statement of fact, right? Put that to a few of them perhaps uh, after the game, uh, assuming they do assure their path into the knockout stages, which they probably will do. Like, I mean, Fiji and Samoa got into the similar situations this week, saying to disrupt a Northern Hemisphere team, saying to disrupt Wales tonight uh, is Fiji. This game should matter a lot more than it really does. Like, they lost to Uruguay really kind of scuppered this uh, as a huge contest from both sides. Uh, obviously, they both uh, named first-choice teams, uh, like uh, injuries. Uh, allowing and all that sort of thing. So it is going to be a, a top-class game, you'd imagine, uh, and Wales probably need to get some momentum under their belts going into the knockout stages. Probably the fourth-best team in, in the competition at this point, and they probably have that uh, position nailed down. You can't really make a case for them uh, in, in the top three at this point. Then again, you can't really make a case for any of uh, Ireland or Australia or France to be any better than Wales at this moment. So I think a semi-final is what uh, this crew is expecting. They've topped the pool, and they've got France in a World Cup quarter-final, you expect. Yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd give Wales. I'd say Wales could f make the case that they're the second best team. We'll, we'll wait and see until the uh, semis uh, actually end up playing out. How are you getting on? So, where are you today in relation to yesterday? So this is about an hour and a half uh, south. Uh, I didn't get a bullet train, so it's uh, a sonic train. It was called. That's the next one down, and then below sonic, I think it's rapid. I'm not sure if there's anyone in between that. But as the first time I was on a sonic train, now it took me along the coastline, and I was in Beppu for the afternoon. So I came down here to Oita this morning, met uh, Shane Williams, did our interview, which is going out later, then went back up to Beppu, because Beppu is a bit more interesting than Oita, because it's got hundreds of natural springs, which are known as onsens. And I hadn't got a chance to go into an onsen while I'd been here in Japan, but uh, sure enough, today I did get that opportunity. Unfortunately, it's not exactly the type of place where you can take footage, because uh, there's just a lot of nudity going on, so uh, naturally couldn't really broadcast that on, uh, on OT OTGAM this morning, but uh, I can't tell you, it was a very relaxing experience. The one I got in particular was, uh, had a panoramic view over the beach in Beppu. So it was a day of hard work and uh, really putting in the graph for the show this morning. Right. I mean, you could have got footage and then you would have gone viral and hey, you know, it's, we're all about the clicks, baby. <laughs> uh, potentially, I did, I did do a, a food review outside the Anton Bath, so maybe that'll uh, go viral later on in the week, who knows. Right. Uh, but yeah, that was, it was like, like it's, uh, they had some in Budapest, I haven't done the ones in Budapest, but uh, the ones here, pretty impressive. I think there's like 600 uh, thermal baths in this uh, little city alone, Beppu. So, uh, very impressive stuff. I, I did go into the first place and they were like, take off your shoes. And I actually kind of chickened out and I was like, I'm not doing this. So I kind of uh, mustered up the courage then, went for a bit of a wander around the city and then stumbled upon another place. They were like, take off your shoes. And then I took off my shoes and I was like, let's do this. So, uh, yeah, job done. Did wear swimming trunks. So I chickened out of it completely. Right. And were you the only Irish journalist there or did like the Irish press back disrobe on mass and, and shock the locals. <laughs> no, I was, I was the only Irish, uh, I was the only Irish journalist there. I wasn't, I don't think I was the only Irish person there, but I was, I was the only Irish journalist there for sure, yeah. So it was sort of a, I was on a, a, a solo mission into Beppu and their uh, thermal baths this morning. Wow, this is getting weirder and weirder on, but uh, you're going native, native or native or if, if that was a, even a word. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's in all the guidebooks, I mean. Uh, the, the last thing really tick off, you know. I've had the sake, I've had the tempura, I've had the sushi, I've had the Kobe beef. The last thing to do was uh, get my body into an onsen, and that I did. Here, Shane Williams, um, 25 minutes with him, so it must be good stuff. Yeah, very interesting stuff. I mean, we go back through the three World Cups that he played differing roles in. Uh, 07 kind of brings a wince to Welsh eyes as it does to Irish eyes. When we speak about that, obviously, they went down to the pool stage and has particular relevance when it comes to this evening's game because they got beaten by Fiji, you'll remember, in an absolute classic in the pool on that occasion, and it was Fiji who progressed, of course, four years later. Wales came back, also drawn against Fiji, and spanked them 66-0. Uh, we also have bad memories of 2011, whereas Wales managed to correct things four years later. 2003 was one of the topics that I was interested in because Shane Williams goes into that tournament as third-choice scrum half, comes out of it as one of the best wingers in the world. So that's a very interesting tournament for him. They should have beaten Wales. 
I think most people will recall, or should have been England, uh, most people will recall, uh, in that year's tournament in, in the knockout stages. So, painful memories again for him. And it's interesting when we talk about the idea of 2011, we would take, we would bite a Welsh arm off to take their situation in 2011. But yet he reflects on it with serious disappointment, actually, after Warburton sending off and losing a semi final. I know it's a point, in fairness, you've made as well, Ger, that you know, winning a quarter final should not be the thing that we pin our hopes on because all of a sudden your evaluation of what a success changes very quickly, mm. as the Welsh can tell us. But losing a semi final, I'd imagine, is even more painful than losing consecutive quarter finals. Uh, Byron McGlynn on YouTube has been in touch to say, This little red lad is the star of the World Cup, he should have a travel show. Is uh, me or the lad behind me? I did manage to find my uh, doppelganger when I came outside. I was like, if I actually, it's not really my doppelganger. We have the same color hair. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, say. That, that's uh, yeah, so uh, he probably means, means that guy. It's, it's nice, actually, it's a nice little area here. Um, they, they, they've actually put Japanese rugby jerseys on a couple of the statues, like the, the old kind of European style uh, kind of cast iron statues and concrete statues uh, around this part of Oita, which is very interesting, and all the people, all the staff in the railway stations all have Japanese rugby jerseys on, on game day, uh, like I've been served by the same people in these train stations on different days, they go back to the uniform on non-game day, but on game day, everybody's in their Japanese jerseys. I am kind of a little bit surprised, I don't know why I'm surprised, maybe it's to me that this World Cup has completely taken over on a local sense, like I think this Ireland result has actually changed things, it's been noticeable since they got that win, since there was a huge chance now that they're in the driving seat to go into the last day, that this country is behind them. I think before them, before that result, I think the country was kind of just a little bit uh, in a wait and see, and dipped the toe in sort of state of mind. And now they're all in, and the pace is buzzing. The amount of locals that are showing up for this game, for these sort of games, is incredible. Very good. What time's kickoff? Kickoff here is 6.45 this evening, so 8.45 a.m. Uh, no, that was 10.45 a.m. Irish time. So you got a, you got a little while before kickoff. We'll uh, we'll talk to you again later. What are your plans for the rest of the uh, next couple of days before the game? So we've got hopefully uh, another big interview coming your way tomorrow. We'll be looking to confirm that this evening. So I don't want to give away uh, the name just yet. Uh, loads of uh, more Ireland preview uh, team announcements. What day is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. So yeah, team announcement day tomorrow. Uh, these weeks go by so bloody quickly. Nine day turnaround. The, the nine days are, are almost already up. You'll have. Uh, a full training session back for Ireland again. Captain's run, of course, on Friday. And then, hopefully, after that, it's kind of navigating your way back to Tokyo because it's going to be something of a navigation at this point. Like, I wouldn't be too confident that my flight is going to take off on Sunday considering it's destined for Tokyo because it looks like uh, the, that typhoon is destined for Tokyo at this point as well. Sunday morning, landfall time, perhaps. And it could be Japan versus Scotland. That's the game under threat. All right. All good stuff. Thanks, Emmanuel. We'll talk to you later.